Production underwriting for Ruckus has been made possible in part by the generous contributions from Fred and Lou Hartwig and from viewers like you. Thank you. Welcome to Ruckus, our weekly food for thought fight over the news of the day and the trends of the times. I'm Mike Shannon, joined by the Ruckettes, Kansas City Star editorial writer Yale Bahaka, Urban League president and CEO Gwen Grant, media and communications consultant Mary O'Halloran, and lobbyist Woody Kozad with the Kozad Company. Well, it's not exactly the kind of top ten list you get from David Letterman, but it's the best we can come up with. It's from Yale, and it's what he sees as the top ten priorities for the greater Kansas City area. Focus on these, he says, and the area will add jobs, residents, and enhance its image as a great place to live and work. Near the top of the list is approving local control of the Kansas City, Missouri Police Department. A commission appointed by Mayor Sly James has been studying this issue, trying to decide if the current system should continue or if Kansas City should surrender its distinction of being the only city in the country whose police department is controlled by the state. The commission issued its report earlier this week. Do you think it came down on the right side, Yale? Uh, no. <laughs> uh, the vote was 13 to 12 for continued state control with the change of expanding the board to seven members. And um, I was uh, with Mayor Sly James today, who's also a police board member, and said, do you favor that? He says, uh, no, I do not. Uh, so it's not going to go anywhere with the mayor and with the council and, and certainly with the legislature. What that would do is diminish the city voice even more. I mean, the mayor who's one of five people would come now one of seven. I mean, it's just ridiculous. And, you know, they had this stuff about how they can maybe meet every week or something like that to have a little bit more, you know, a little bit of oversight. But bottom line, um, uh, the mayor again said this morning, no, the process, we will continue. We're going to continue looking at it, continue looking at ways to at least make this system work better, which is, you know, some of the consolidation stuff that can save money, some of the various things of trying to improve the police department with state control. But I would not be surprised if through a state initiative, through something that he can still go to the state legislature on, maybe not this year, but probably next year, we might see the issue revisited. Well, Gwen, you were on the commission, right? Yes, I was. And you voted for, <laughs> voted local, for control. local control. Voted, right. And uh, yes. four or five people didn't show up. If they yeah, had been there, there were, perhaps the vote outcome would have been different. Perhaps the, the vote could have been different. There were several people who um, were not um, frequent attend attendees. Uh, but certainly, if those uh, yeah, they didn't show yeah, up, they didn't show ever, up right? very much at all. Right. And uh, but if those five people had attended and and voted, perhaps the outcome would have been different. But I think the mayor would be wise to proceed in that. If you look at what happened when this initiative was on uh, the ballot in the last election in St. Louis, uh, it was a statewide uh, initiative, mm -hmm. and uh, Kansas Cityans voted 67 uh, percent for local control for St. Louis. And so one, it stands to reason that if it were on the ballot here, the electorate would support local control. So uh, I think that was Rex Singfield's initiative, was it yeah. not? And did he not make an offer to Kansas City yes. to be involved in this? Yeah. And but Kansas they, City chose not the, to? The, the, leader, backed off for the leadership of the city was uh, <laughs> everywhere from ambivalent uh, to, to some opposed. Some of the business leadership was quietly opposed behind the scenes. Uh, the mayor would not come out and say, yeah, I want it, I'm, let's go. So he said, okay, you, you, I will just do it for St. Yeah, Louis. Yeah, but he also Let, did a letter. Criticize. There was a letter circulated where the mayor had supported uh, the mayor in St. Louis for right, local control, right. which is now like, we why? Should we should have been. The mayor for well, not, it's not a critique. It's just a statement of fact that the mayor did support it in St. Louis. Control. Well, I guess Rex Singfield made an offer that the mayor could refuse. I don't <laughs> know exactly. But, you know, the thing that, I, that I'm puzzled by with regard to this is that you know, Kansas Cityans really are not kind of like, you know, the Western secessionists or something, you know, the only city in the United States. And, and Yale, I always bring this up to you because I like to. For so long, the Kansas City Star mm -hmm. thought that the, that the city shouldn't manage its own, almost anything. But I, I am puzzled by this. The makeup of the commission itself, Gwen? Yes. It, yeah. And it was lopsided. I mean, well, it, 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 certainly on the night of the vote. Uh, well, you had a lot of police people. You had, had a lot of police. police. Yeah. You yeah. had the yeah. union. Yeah. I mean, when the police people, people who were involved with the police, were mm -hmm. police officers, mm -hmm. did they all vote against local control? Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. 
former yeah. former. Well, what does that say? Well, well, <laughs> <laughs> what does it say? It says that they don't. It says want they're to happy change. with the they're way it is. Yes, yes, they, they are. Want, yeah. Why they wouldn't you be? Change. And they wouldn't right. be comfortable with city council members perhaps being involved with the day-to-day. -day well, but they, you know, you know I haven't I mean, seen any evidence that that. Would well, what does it say they're concerned about, Yale? It says they're concerned that they're going to lose their fiefdom. Okay, I mean, bottom line. Now. Are there a lot of great police officers out there and a lot yes, of great right. police commanders? Sure. Absolutely. But the but in other cities, you're able to have well managed police departments run by, you know, overseen by Well, most officials. cities. I mean virtually well, every, every city. city. Every but, city you know, except Kansas City. If you're paying the bills, you ought to have control. It's yeah. just as Call the accountability. They're not just everything. paying <laughs> the bills. They run the budget. They run they the budget. They are not helpless. If they have the courage to use the leverage they now have, they can deal with this police department under the present system. No, sir, system. they cannot. No, sir, they but cannot. They, I've, I've watched them try, and they cannot. They, so they, don't, don't tell no, me that. They don't, I've watched them for 20 they, years, and they cannot. They do not have the guts to say the magic words, the money isn't coming. No, they've said that. No, they've said that sometimes. The police board then just moves the money around. They gave a 10% raise one year when the city said, no, you cannot do this. Said, well, we're doing it. We have state control. And they did it. Oh, you know, God bless them for doing it. You know, the police benefited from it, but the police board made that decision. Okay, we have to move to the next topic. They cut the check from City Hall. We've got to move on. Okay. But I mentioned they the top ten. The uh, some of the other yes, items push development in South Kansas Absolutely. City. <clears throat> Try again to pass the sales tax for parks in Blue Springs. Yes. Decide whether to push commuter rail in Jackson County. That'll might be, might happen tomorrow. Might hear about that tomorrow. Investigate where the next streetcar line should go before That's the first streetcar line is happening right now. Actually put in. That was a pretty good and top ten list. It was it? great. And then you had Clay County needs to deal with this uh, dysfunctional political yeah. leadership. Good luck there. While one commission has been reviewing the police department, another has been scouring the city charter, looking for ways to update it. Among the recommendations, one additional authority for the mayor. He would no longer need council support to fire the city manager. Two, move election dates from February and March to April and May. And three, elect all 12 city council members from the districts where they live. Do away with the current system where six are elected district-wide and six are elected at large or citywide. So let's start with the last recommendation first. Is changing the council structure a good idea? Woody. No. There you go. And would you care to idea. tell us why? I, go, I mean, I, I hate to agree with the star. But I agree with all three points on this reform thing with, with the star. No, it's not a good idea. Look, the abstract pie-in-the-sky theory is you, you shrink this down to where handfuls of people can elect their own council person. Uh, the reality is that strengthens the people who do get out the vote, that, that political hacks, the ward healers, people like that. I used to be one that's... So say and the lobbyists and the lobbyists yeah. and and I'm just telling you they love to get a little bitty area they only need a couple hundred votes and they've elected a city council member and that person then has input on this huge budget so little bit of leverage a lot of power at the end of it and it's a generally I don't think it's a good idea secondly I'm not happy with the way city halls run but I don't see a relationship between this idea and you know the problems I you see in city hall Oh, gee, they, yeah, that problem, there's a direct causal connection to the fact that we don't elect all our council well, people. Well, the, the, in, in real, the, real impetus, the real impetus for this, is it not, is to increase minority. Yeah, well, sure, and that was the, the impetus reason. when we did it to the Kansas the City School Board. Yeah. School well, but the problem and it didn't here, work very well. 50 years ago when this was put in place, it was opposed by minorities then, and they didn't have the power or the uh, support they needed to, to, to challenge it. And 50 years now, it's still an inequitable process. So it's not just about the governance structure. It's about equity and representation. If, we, if minorities represent 30 percent, uh, actually when you include uh, Latinos, you're looking at more like 40 percent of the population, then there should be equitable representation on the council. Why? Uh, you, you think there, if there's 40 percent of one Why? population, because you should have 40 percent of the city council made up of those people? Well, no, I think well. they, they should have the opportunity to be equitably represented. When you, when, here's, it breaks down to one simple fact. A white person running at large 
can win that seat without the input or without the vote of the African American or the minority community. A minority running at large cannot win without the vote like Mayor of Sly the James? white. I said a running in district. The mayor runs at large. That's different. Let We're me. talking about council seats. Let me just in district. District. Yeah, you don't agree uh, with electing, uh, you, you, electing a mayor occasionally a, a black or like uh, you know a minority mayor is one thing. A city council is different. Yeah, you don't agree with Gwen. Do no, we on disagree this? on no, this. No, we so do. Okay. Gwen and I were peas in the pod on local control. And now we, we are, are not. totally not. But local. but in looking at this over, I mean, we writing about it for like 25, 26 <clears throat> years. I know I know exactly what Gwen is talking about in theory. But in no, practice, in, in, in practice, practice we've actually had all in district, Gwen, and they don't Gwen, have bickering. Thank you. Like the other but in practice, and we're bickering. In practice, Kansas City has done very well at almost doing exactly what Gwen wants: proportionality of the election of. African American officials. Kansas is doing so well. we're actually doing very it's doing well. It's well that. for people who are right. not minorities. Right, I want no. Mary to <laughs> no, check. I mean yeah. Emmanuel okay. Cleaver okay. and hey, I, I want Mary to check in here before I want Mary to check in here before the I understand sentence. where you're coming from. I have two or three problems. One is it's going to be very hard to carve out a district that's a Hispanic district, is it not? Well, no. Well, if you draw yeah. many districts. Is, uh, well, you I, think so. I think so. Secondly, Hispanic. There we is looked at the maps. This other factor. Go, 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 go. There's this other factor, Gwen, and I and I hope that you would agree with this. That when you have people running at large, they must campaign in the minority districts. They must campaign all but they over the city. Won. They haven't won the minority vote. Well, so they can't. Well, 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 that's the whole that's point. Not a big we deal, have. Gwen. Yeah, it's a but big the, deal no, for minorities not. when we I can't elect the representative actually, of our you choice. Would end up you have to understand it from a position of equity, right. and you're not getting the real. Oh, uh, we'll wrap this up. Uh, uh, the mayor, <laughs> under this plan, yes. could fire the city manager yeah. without support from the council. Right. Why can't he hire him? Or her. Fine well, idea. that's actually that was a little distinction that meant at the very end, and that's why I'm not exactly sure this one's going to go forward. Okay, and could the council supersede the mayor and fire the city manager, even though he would want the city manager? Yes, retained? they just have to have a number of votes to do so. Okay, have a lot right. of votes. <laughs> Kansas City Star editorial board wants the Missouri Supreme Court to overturn a lower court ruling that outlaws red light cameras at 17 busy local intersections. Until last week, a snapshot of your vehicle running a stoplight could result in you getting a ticket through the mail. The thrust of the editorial is the assumed safety benefits derived from the cameras. But read a little more and you see there's also an economic consideration for Kansas City, Missouri government. And it is considerable, Mary. It is considerable. And, and, and this, I don't know whether I care that much about this until I start thinking about it. And I start thinking about how much I posed it in the beginning. And then as time goes on, you get used to it. You think, oh, well, I probably slowed down a little more at that 30 ounce in traffic way of intersection when I'm coming through and I see the, the light up there. And I suppose a lot of people do. So it's saving lives. I'm pretty sure that's true. However, there are lots of ways to save lives. And then I start reading about how much the company that sells these <laughs> uh, lights to cities is making. Did you, in in with, Kansas City, it's... I want to ask you if it's accurate. What you had in, in the story, $4,500 a month for per light? camera, $1.6 million year? a year, according Any to the Kansas City Star. Any of you get in the business of selling the little lights to the cities. It, then you have a monopoly and you get rent. $4,500 a month is pretty, that's amazing. Them. Why are we not we don't own them. them? Why don't we just buy them? Right, Gwen. And, and apparently, uh, thus far, it's taken in about $2 million a year for Kansas City, yes. Missouri and government. And, 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 and the city keeps 400000 Right. Now, the appeals oh, court has, I think, okay. is right about this. So they they have that. caught no. an, an, an inconsistency that uh, some places are calling this a moving violation mm -hmm. and some places are not. And so if you have some moving violation, then you have to treat it as one. So they're saying some places uh, go after the driver and some places go after the owner. So there's a disagreement. The, 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 the third thing I just want to say about this thing is I still have deep reservations about the extent to which the government is photographing and Amen. recording mm -hmm. and keeping track of our every move. Yep. Now we know what the federal government is up to, the National Security Agency, and I look at this as a time when people have just got to say there are limits to the invasions of our privacy that we're going to allow. 
not necessarily saying this is the worst of the lot by any means, but we can, every week the stuff that's coming out from the federal government just shocks the daylights out of you, and we have to stay shocked. It's kind of Otherwise an interesting we'll get used to it. Uh, legal situation, Woody. Uh, yep. The court upheld the law a couple of years ago right. and now says, hey, we, we've and changed our you, mind. If you read that original opinion, it was very persuasive. Uh -huh. Now you read this one, you know something? It's very persuasive. It's very persuasive. <laughs> the, the, I'm sorry, it is, and the law on this is is clearly not clear. Mm -hmm. And they are therefore, they got a decent shot if the Supreme Court doesn't reverse this. They're going to wind up down in the legislature. And and these guys who are making the 1.6 million the have got a team of lobbyists ready to go. Uh, already have them working down there. So it, but it'll be an interesting fight because there are people who feel about these cameras the way you're talking of, privacy stuff, cameras. And so if they have to go back down there, it's going to be a real interesting fight. And, and I let me pitch in. I, I agree with Mary, and this is far from the more, most egregious. Uh, but right. it, nationally, this is an issue. Somebody's right. going to run for office for president and make an issue out of this. I don't know what his idea is going to be to do something about it, but he's going to make an issue out of this privacy stuff, and it's going to resonate with a lot of voters. Yale, has this been a, a great safety device for Kansas City? Has it, do you think, saved lives? Yeah, uh, yes. Prevented accidents? Prevented accidents. It, it is overall it's good I understand of course the surveillance idea except you know you this is what I come back down to me and this is one reason I support him you're breaking the law you got caught breaking the law you have to pay a fine for breaking the law all of that happens with a police officer and it, yes it can also happen with a you know camera catching you when there's no police officer around uh, maybe that's the small Boy Scout in me, but I think that's that's all fine. The punishment is fine. Uh, you know, my kid got caught doing this thing. Ho I hope he is much more reluctant to run red lights now because it's going to cost him another hundred and some odd dollars, you know, uh, for doing it. Now, I guess the problem for some is that the ticket goes to the owner of the vehicle and the owner may well, not be, I was the owner of the vehicle, but, the driver, but my so. son paid it. Okay. Oh, okay, well, okay, you, can't, you can't enforce that yes, necessarily. You can. Well, when does well, we you ever can, have a debate on that subject? We haven't. These things go in, they get purchased by <laughs> mayors and council well, people, and then well, away we go. We talked about we it several times on, on Ruckus about the, the red Ruckus, what's that? Is that a TV show? It's a fine it's a food show. For flight, <laughs> it's a food for thought fight over the news of the day and the trips. It's called the Affordable Care Act, but many are finding it unaffordable. Its nickname is Obamacare, but maybe it should be Obama careless. From day one, October one, there have been persistent problems with the healthcare.gov website. Initially, the criticism came only from Republicans, but now leading Democrats are also talking about modifying the president's signature legislation. President Obama says he's committed to solving the problems, but how do you go about reforming the Reformation, When? <laughs> well, he's got to fix the darn website. I mean, the number one thing is you, you've got to get the website fixed and you've got to get it done quickly. Uh, and, you know, that will solve a lot of the problem. Because what you have, because the website isn't working, is just open the door for all these other, all these other problems that eventually will <laughs> get ironed out over time. When Medicare, uh, when they made changes in the Medicare uh, prescription drug coverage, there were glitches in that system and they worked them out. Social Security did, probably didn't roll out smoothly. All these things take time to fix. But in this case, the problem for the president is he's not out in front of this uh, change, especially with regard to people losing uh, their coverage and having to pay more to, to get the new coverage under the law. And I think he needs to uh, be proactive and come forward with a resolution but to I'm that not issue. Sure, yeah, I think he's going to do that, but I'm yeah. not sure the, the website solves the problem of him saying, if you like your coverage, well, yeah, you, you know, can keep your coverage, and period. That was a, you know, he said that he put period on the end, yeah. and, that's, and they've got him on that. I they've mean, there's no way. The they've got him on the period. <laughs> but the fact of the matter is that that these these policies have expired because they don't fit the new law, and they people will most likely have better coverage because right. they're protected against, you know, they now can uh, have uh, pre-existing conditions, they can have their their children yeah. on. Yeah, we, we so know all the, Mary, there are, there are Democratic senators 
proposing legislation Mike, that, say that says uh, you can keep your insurance law. You can't keep a straight face. Well, there are Democratic senators <laughs> proposing are. that. Oh, so, yes, Mary Landrew from Louisiana. Well, well, she'll, she'll be lucky to get reelected if she votes for anything having to do with Obamacare. Look, well, let's just get real factual about it. I support the way Gwen talked about it. This doesn't cause anybody any problems till March 31st. And I will, I would be willing to bet any of you a lot of money that this website is going to, is going to be cracking by the first part of oh, December. Yeah. It's very, right. very complex. Mike, I've had a little experience right. <laughs> at rolling out yeah. new federal programs and taking but responsibility websites. for every but, last aspect. But nothing aspect as massive I, as I, well, Obamacare. Well, it's just a four-state program. But well, I'll but be, that's, we're not, not talking about 36 states. But I understand the states. dynamic. You can't, there's no perfect new program, right. let alone one that affects millions of people. Absolutely. So Kathleen Sebelius, God bless her, she stood, you know, she's out there and let those, those, you know, Wahoos from Texas, you know, just <laughs> <laughs> members of Congress <laughs> performing their oversight responsibilities. Well, making fun of uh, Kansas, <laughs> making fun of Kansas, okay, okay. making fun uh, of her. Uh, I want to get you know, Woody and Woody Yale in here. Uh, Woody, Woody, what a word. Woody, some, Woody, some, Woody, some Woody. say the greatest damage, really, for President Obama is damage to his credibility, yeah. and that it will be very hard for him to restore the luster that his image may have had for many before Obamacare. Well, I think that's accurate, and I think it goes back to this thing, and it ain't just the word period at the end of it. Uh, let's go back to when this was being passed. It never had some great tidal wave of public support, and the reason for that was the vast majority of Americans had health insurance, right. and 85 percent of them liked the coverage they had. This repeated statement was repeated for a reason, because if those people thought, uh-oh, I'm not going to get to keep the coverage I have that I like, all of a sudden, people from Democrats whose votes were desperately needed in a pure party line vote uh, would have to say, hold it, I got an election face. So this, ha this statement had to be made, and it had to be made over and over again, flatly, unequivocally made over and over again to assure the 85 percent of insured people, you are the decider in whether you keep your coverage rather than telling them, we're yeah. going to massively change the incentives so your insurance company will change your coverage, yeah. your employer will change your coverage, we will change your coverage in the individual market, and you are the only person who will have nothing to say about what you're covering. Oh, Kathleen yeah. Sebelius, so uh, there are those who say her reputation has been really <laughs> sullied by this. Uh, yeah. What's your estimate of it? Um, I think her reputation has been really sullied by this. Uh, as a supporter, general supporter of the Affordable Care Act, I totally agree with Woody. It's been an absolute botched, um, botched unveiling. Uh, Kathleen yesterday was saying, "Well, you know, in Massachusetts, only a few hundred signed up That's in the first true. year, and those are all That's those true. are all true." However, they had year more than a year to get this right. They had hundreds of millions of dollars to get this right. And yes, I know, and Woody, I'm sorry on this. They were fighting the Republicans and all these stupid state legislators that would not help them do it right. So it's Just so some of the botch is not a surprise. Yeah. But, but but the point is it is botch. Where do we go from here? I, I think I Gwen is probably right that eventually I get the website fixed, but are people gonna trust anymore? I, yeah, I don't I know if they're gonna tell you. All right. All right. Well, I gotta go. It's time now for <laughs> roast and toast, where the Ruckettes throw bouquets or brickbats at people and events in the news. And up first this time is Woody. Uh, I'd like to toast the mayor on something he's probably not very happy about, and that's his commission on local control. And not necessarily because of the result of what they voted, but simply because clearly he didn't absolutely rig the commission. And that's not normally the way you do these things in City Hall. You say, we're going to look into this. You're not really going to look into it. You stack the thing, and you know what the result is ahead of time. And what that leads to is cynicism on the part of the public. That would be me. This is great. You actually named a commission. We all knew what you wanted, and you didn't get it. Mr. Mayor, I, I thank you. Well, I have a bouquet for the uh, Charter Review Commission for recommending that we change the manner in which we elect city council members to 12 in-district seats. It's an unpopular decision, but it's one that promotes equity and equal representation in uh, city governance. Well, uh, coming right up is the 50th anniversary of the assassination of the president, who probably meant more to me and I think millions of people around the world than any other in the 20th century. And that is John F. Kennedy. And we've seen lots of uh, news reports now trying to educate the younger generation about what he was like 
why it was so loved. Why did people weep in the streets when he was assassinated? It had lots of reasons, not all of which had just to do with his charm. He had powerful ability to lift people's spirits and change their point of view about the world and what was possible by the power of his language and his rhetoric. My fa one of my favorites is very short. It says, we shall do our part to build a world of peace where the weak are, are safe and the strong are just. That's what he was like. Uh, well, this is high school football playoff season, but they don't get my toast this week, and I'm glad they're doing it. This is actually a toast to the more than 1,200 high school cross-country runners I saw at the state championships last weekend in Jeff City. You want to see a sport that really tests you to your limit and tests you individually and team-wise. Cross-country is your sport. It was a great day. Congratulations to all the high school athletes participating in that great sport. And finally, a toast to KMBC TV anchorman Larry Moore, who is taking on emeritus status at the end of the month. During his long career, Larry has been active in community and civic affairs. He's especially known for his work with the Dream Factory. Spending 40 years in one town at the same station is almost unheard of in commercial broadcasting. That is not an easy thing to accomplish. And believe me, I speak from experience. <laughs> And that's Ruckus for this week. We're back next Thursday at 7.30 with guest Ruckette Crosby Kemper. Now on behalf of the panel and the Ruckus crew, I'm Mike Shannon saying thanks very much for watching and good night.